All right, let's continue to our next session. And up next, we have Dr. Wong Chin Chin from Ada with us. She holds a PhD in Business Statistics and Econometrics with extensive experience in market research and advisories while spanning across S. FMCG, telecommunications, electronics, IT, retail, BFSI, tourism, transportation, media, the public sector and more. She has successfully filled four patents, published several journals, conference papers as well as book chapters. Dr Wong delivers strategic commercially oriented business direction to clients and is experienced in mixed market research methodologies. Dr. Wong is currently the regional head of consumer products, business insights and analytics at ADA. And we are absolutely very honoured to have Ada as our tech tutor sponsor of the Marcom Tech Conference. And if you have any questions for Dr. Wong, please do not hesitate to post it in the chat box or in the comment section. You know the drill and we'll be addressing it with Dr. Wong at the end of the presentation. Alright, so Dr. Wong will be joining us shortly, so stay tuned. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the introduction. I'm Chin Chin from ADA. I'm going to talk to you about converting data from demand and marketing strategies to drive revenue. I'm going to walk you through a use case that I've been using. Okay, um, just a brief introduction again. I'm, uh, I have about close to 20 years experience in market research. A brief introduction of ADA. Uh, we're operating in 10 markets, HQ in Malaysia. To date, we have about over a thousand uh, employees, data scientists, digital media gurus, industry experts, consultants, and technology specialists. All right, we work across different verticals, be it banking, insurance, financial institutions, telecommunications, consumer goods, retail, FMCG, automotive, hospitality, tourism, and whatnot. Okay, now within ADA, there are five key pillars. Tomorrow, my colleague YC will be sharing on marketing technology. Today, we focus on business insights and analytics. Now, within ADA, we use insights to drive our digital marketing uh, assets. All right. So just a very brief um, introduction on how do we capture our data. Now, imagine your smartphone. You have uh, installed free apps. Now, whenever you install free apps, you will say and not allow access to location at all times or only when you're using the app or not at all. Now, if you choose at all times or when you're using the app, what happened on the back end on the ad exchange server is that they're bidding for the ad to be shown to you. At the same time, what's actually being collected from you is your timestamp, your GPS location. So where you are at a specific time, your app or your app categories, your mobile operator, your device brand and model, and your IFA or your identifier for advertiser. In other words, your unique mobile advertising ID. It stays with the device until you reformat your phone. Okay, now with this information, we know where you are, at what time, what kind of phone, what kind of app you have, all right? And this gives us our AI model to infer a few things. For example, your demographics, your, your gender, your age group, your affluence level, your home location. Now, if you're seen in a certain location uh, several times a week in the evening, we assume that's your home location. If you're seeing nine to six in a certain location, uh, we assume that's your work location. Now we overlay your home location with home property prices. We then determine that you're staying in a affluent area or less affluent area. Your device model, when we overlay with device prices, we know you're holding an expensive device or not so expensive device. Now all this gives us a picture of who the person is, the interest, the demo, the demographic uh, profile, where the person is, all right, when the person is seen in certain places or location, okay? But don't worry, these are all um, privacy law compliant, all right? There's no uh, personal identifier information, all right? No PII, because I don't know your actual gender, your actual age, your mobile number. All I have is, is your IFA and all the other inferred things because of the apps that you're using or location you're, you're seeing. Okay? Now, what's our coverage over here? In, across the 10 markets, we have 382 million devices, close to 1 million apps, free apps, all right, that we have access to. And the places of interest, we geofence the places of interest. 
is still growing as I speak. All right. Now, this gives us a few things. Your home, your work location, where you're seen, um, the gardens, Mid Valley Mall, or, or where, uh, where else, your gender, your age group, affluence, what kind of behavior. If you have um, shopping apps and you're also seen in shopping mall, perhaps I can group you under Shopaholic. All right. Now, this information helps us to make a decision on who your visitors are. All right. So how our client use insights-driven creatives to drive sales and win awards. This is one, one of those our solutions called Consumer Profiler. All right. Based on what I've explained just now on how we collect our data, we know the footfall levels, we know the demographics, we know the persona because of the apps and also the offline locations you're seeing, cross visits patterns, device information, distance from home or work location. All right. How many profiles do we have in Malaysia? 24 million devices. Okay, so a snapshot. This is an example that I'm going to walk you through for petrol stations. We geofence every single petrol station in Malaysia. Okay, close to 4,000 of them. We do polygonal geofencing, which means the exact shape of the petrol stations, not radio geofencing. So this allows a more accurate capturing of IFA seen within petrol stations. Okay, we label them as uh, different brands, uh, be it um, Petronas, Shell, Caltex, PHP, and whatnot. Okay, then we have several things that our client would like to look at. The market share, the footfall share of each of the different petrol stations. Are they the new customers, never before seen in this petrol brand, but now being seen in this petrol brand? Are they now increasingly more loyal? They don't switch around. Uh, the station performance down to each outlet, Okay, the movement of the petrol goers and whatnot. Okay, the peak hours as well, which are the three hours interval that we see higher footfall. We also know who are the petrol goers, the gender, age group, affluence level, uh, device and carrier information if, if that's of importance. Okay, and even their behavior. For example, other point of interest they are seen. All right, what kind of partner stores are actually located in each of the petrol stations? Did someone go to these petrol stations and stay longer because there's um, a, a fast food chain restaurants over there or because of certain convenience mart or whatnot? Even the online behavior, what kind of apps or app categories the person is using? All right? Persona is defined on either the, just the online apps or the offline be behavior or combination of those traits. I'll bring you through in the case study soon. All right? We segment the users or the visitors into a few segments. One being the client loyalists. These are IFA or people or smartphones are actually seen in certain brand of petrol, petrol stations at least 70% of the time. Okay, this is customized based on this scenario. We also see competitors loyalists, those that are seen at least 70% of the time with one petrol brand. We also see client switches okay, and competitor switches. They switch between brands. All right. How Understanding this target audience, knowing that, okay, are they loyalties, are they switches, and who are just staying loyal with um, competitors, all right? Then we see, uh, we drive outcome for modern marketers. Understanding who the customers are. For example, competitors, loyalists, are they skew certain age group, gender, persona, or what other point of interest, or is it because it's just convenience? You know, a lot of things we can look at because we know who they are, you know, when they go to certain places, where else are they seen? Okay, targeted acquisition. If I know that there are certain visitors who have been switching around brands, what kind of segment, what kind of persona are they? And we can then craft the creatives accordingly. Okay, we can even share the IFA with our client with our clients as well for targeted acquisition. Or to find look alike people who are the kind of persona, you know, then we can actually acquire them um, for our clients. Okay. Now, we can also customize those personas. For example, for petrol station brand, um, there's a few things that they want to know. Are they busy bee? Okay, people who are seen in multiple locations in a day, they are called busy bee. All right? Or travelers, people who are seen on the certain locations or travel a certain distance or they're seen on North South Highway or not, those are travelers. We have also premium users, those are seen in affluent areas because we know their home location. Therefore, we infer their home location. Therefore, we know that the home property prices, are they staying in an affluent area 
or people who are seen in automotive, you know, showroom, uh, workshop, service centres, or even shoppers, you know. These are the more of the offline focused persona that we crafted for our client. There's also some that are more online focused, for example, social butterflies, people who have social apps on their phone. Wealth manager, you know, people who have wealth management or investment app in their phone. Phone freaks, more of the tech geeks and gamers as well. So having these different personas help our client to craft different marketing services, marketing campaigns messages, all right, to these people, even location specific as well, okay? Now, how does this drive the outcome with what we have been uh, showing just now, all right? Now, before we know what to target, we have to know how are we performing. Now, with the footfall that we track by petrol station brands, we will then see, okay, are there certain months that we're performing a bit worse? Are there certain months we're performing much better? And if we're performing not so good, who are the ones who are stealing our footfall share? Okay, we don't know how much they spend at petrol stations, but because we track the footfall, we know that, you know, that it's because um, it was stolen by or, or switching to a different petrol brand. Then when we have a higher petrol, a higher footfall share, all right, who are those people? When do they come? Which stations are actually performing better in terms of footfall? Okay, knowing who those people are, are they the new switches? Are they the new loyalists? Are they new customers or what happened? Will help us also to craft targeted messages to intended audience. Okay, now knowing how we perform, right? Then see offline trades. I know there's a busy table over there, but what I'm just trying to convey here is that we also link each of the petrol stations with the partner stores that's in there. For example, uh, petrol station A is actually partner with a QSR or one of the fast food chain A, and then petrol station B with another uh, kind of a fast food chain or convenience store or, or whatnot you have there. Which ones of it actually have higher footfall? We do see a, quite a key difference. You know, before pandemic and now in the new norm, there's also some petrol station that picked up you know, a lot of footfall. You know, because of, and we do see it's actually tied to a specific QSR brand. Okay, fair, fair, fairly interesting. That's what we see there. So how, what does it mean to you, knowing the, where people are going, even for your stores and competitor stores? Maybe you want to work with a new partner. Maybe you want to change certain partners that you have in certain uh, petrol stations. Right? That could help as well. Now, knowing the offline uh, trades, how about the online trades? All right? With all the IFA, we know what kind of app categories that the visitors are using. Is there a specific skew? Now, if you have games in your phone, we assume you like games, right? Pretty straightforward. You have social apps, you have beauty apps, and then we just group you under. Apps usually reflect how a person is. You know, your interest is reflected in what kind of apps that you install. Now, we compare clients' apps market share, okay, app share versus the competition, okay? We do see that in a, one of the competitors, they have a skew or, or leading number of actually finance app. For our client, it's actually shopping app and religious app as well. Now, knowing the interest help us to craft. Are these group of people the ones that we managed to attract or we did not manage to attract? Should we then target these people based on the interest that they have? All right. Now, combining online and offline, we can also see their persona. All right. Over here, we try to compare across different petrol brands. Are they um, a, a shopaholic? Are they busy bee, for example, seen in multiple locations? Uh, comparing to each of the persona, what kind of uh, each of the petrol brands, which one has a leading uh, a number compared or leading share compared to all the other persona? Again, this helps us to craft the messages for the targeted audience. Okay. Now, the conclusion of the persona, the combining the online and offline trade, it's very specific. We do see that client, as I mentioned just now, actually skewed towards shoppers and busy bee. Competitor D, for example, skewed towards travelers because they're seen on North or South Highway or they're seen towards, you know, they, they manage to attract people who are actually traveling longer distance. Now, bear in mind, this is for petrol brand. You can... Um, Apply this or assume this can be used also for a different scenario, um, or shopping malls or tourist attraction or whatnot. Okay? Competitor C is more of the phone freaks or the tech geeks. 
Competitor D span across several gamers, social butterfly, working professionals. Competitor A are, the, are actually skewed to say automotive. So people who are actually seen in car workshop, car showroom or whatnot. Okay. Now we do know that these are very um, persona skewed towards different brands. Therefore, if you want to acquire some switches, what kind of messages that we need to target for these uh, um, uh, visitors or the new acquisition? Okay. So with this, knowing the offline trade, the online trade, studying all the insights on when they visit, uh, uh, where else are they seen? So we group them under the target audience, which is called brand switches, the competitors, customers, and the clients' loyalists. Of course, you have to reward and appreciate your own loyalists as well. All right. So the three types, the people who are sitting on the fence, we call them brand switches, uh, the, the uh, competitors, customers, clients, loyalists. We also group them into persona because we see what kind of skill they are based on the online and the offline trade. For example, for brand switches, auto segments and car owners kind of a persona, we craft 12 personalized or personified messaging for one of the campaigns. For competitors, customers, frequent travelers, all right? We have 12 um, banners, we have 12 personalized videos and whatnot based on the, the, that kind of a persona that we're trying to attract. Clients loyalists, for example, we appreciate those with family, with kids, working professionals and shoppers. Another type of um, creatives, 12 banners and oh, with three sizes each, with a different format. All this crafted based on what we find from our footfall analysis. Okay. So this is to, to sum it up, um, the campaigns that we have, the different uh, main personas, the different uh, audience for um, each of the persona, okay? Multiple headlines, different formats, body copy, you know, for multiple formats to give you that kind of um, uh, targeted approach to your customer acquisition, okay? Um, next slide. Sorry, a bit of a technical issue here. Uh, on to the, to the next slide that we have. Ah, okay. What outcome did we achieve out of all, all this? All right. The overall uplift, okay. I'll be going through the uplift of um, uh, what outcome, all right. Overall uplift in key business metrics includes over 200% increase in the key performance, you know, the, their KPI, and over 70% increase to the click two website and video views, 1.45% increase in CTR, over 50% new customer acquisition. And this is something that is very impressive uh, for our clients as well. And out of those, okay, imagine you have new customers being acquired, but are they also staying loyal to you or they just try you and then they just disappear? 76.7% .7 of new customer survivability rate. Okay, so the, the new customers acquired actually stay loyal with our client. Okay, just to give you another view, once we have the campaign up and coming, then you see the footfall actually uh, uh, increase in the recent months. Now, these are new customers being acquired. Now, again, just to showcase, not just that we have the creators, but we can measure the outcome. Did we manage to attract the right people? Where and when? Okay, we can pinpoint down to which station is actually performing better or performing worse as well. We also track social listening. So how are people talking about uh, different campaigns? Uh, are they staying neutral? Are they staying positive and whatnot? Okay, I'll just sum up very quickly on the key highlights of what I've mentioned earlier. Okay, on, the on what we do is to mobilize um, to Joe fans all the petrol stations, which is the one of effort to to Joe France, 4, 000, over, uh, almost 4,000 uh, petrol stations in Malaysia. Okay? Once they have polygonal uh, Joe Fencing, we extract the IFA, we profile them. Right? And then the campaign execution, as I mentioned just now, is actually based on the insights that we have. Then we monitor the campaign and measure it. And this is how uh, AI has, has helped the creatives to go ahead to actually acquire uh, um, more than 5% conversion rate even during lockdown and still growing. Okay, so that sums up my sharing today. Please scan the QR code to receive a complimentary consultation call. I do have myself and my colleagues ready to help you with it. Thank you.
right. Hi, everyone. And thank you so much, Dr. Wong, for that particular sharing session. That was amazing. And we do have a few more questions here. But again, if anybody else in the audience members, you know, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Just put it in the comment section below and then we'll try and address it as fast as possible. I personally have a question for you, Dr. Wong. Um, but before we do that, I think let's move on foot to the first question. And this is from Lisa. Uh, with the recent privacy rule changes for Apple iOS, how does it impact your data? Actually, this was the question that I was going to ask. So thank you, Lisa. All right, Dr. Wong, uh, what is the response for that? Yeah, thank you, Mara. That's a very good question, actually. Now, we can still see data that is um, before uh, Apple, uh, Apple 12. But unfortunately, yeah, with the iOS uh, privacy law change, after that, we don't have access to those data. But Android is still pretty much uh, the majority share. And uh, with that, we still have enough sample. Uh, as I mentioned just now, for Malaysia, it's still 24 million of sample sizes. So it's still robust enough for us to, to craft out the, the insights and for marketing campaigns. Mm, wonderful. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, and uh, we also, I think, have a few more other questions. Another one we have from Abdul. Uh, okay, so this is uh, your data answers who, when, where, but do you also look into why and uh, how do you do so? Yeah, thanks Abdul for the question. Another good question there. So I've mentioned just now, you know, over and over again, the who, the when, and the where. How about the why? And because we have the IFA captured at certain locations, we can actually send IFA targeted survey. You know, whenever you're using an app, uh, probably a, um, a video show up, or in certain cases, it can be a, a survey link. Click here, and then you get rewards, for example. And in that case, we can ask you uh, some short questions where we can then collect the data to understand why certain people are appearing in certain places or, having, or showing certain behaviour. So that answers the why for you. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I remember uh, with your profile, actually, Dr. Wong, that you were, uh, you are an expert at mixed mode of um, um, uh, studies. So I guess this is where we see the qualitative with the quantitative mixed together. Oh, that's wonderful. It's a pretty uh, all-encompassing product. Um, okay, so we have another question from Ramesh. And the question is, how would these data impact business outcomes directly? I guess this is a bit more on revenue. Um, well, if you're looking at, um, let's say, uh, what I've shown earlier on the marketing campaigns, um, the customer data acquisition, if you have targeted, if you know what kind of insights you have that drive the kind of creatives, um, thereby you have uh, the measurable outcome. So how does data impact the business outcome? I would say more uh, measurable in a way because we do track the footfall, whether there are more people of certain target segment actually appearing at your outlets, for example. Yeah, gone were the days, I guess, that you would have to hang out, uh, like hand out surveys, right? Now you can have direct in that information directly. The moment you get into the polygon of the petrol station, for example, you know you're there and you know that you are a customer. Yep. Wow, that is, uh, that is definitely um, you know, a step forward. Okay, so we have uh, yet another question from Gary. Oh, that's my favorite character from SpongeBob. <laughs> Just a side joke there. All right, so the question, thank you so much, Gary. So the question is, is ADA, ADA data, only applies to Malaysia and neighboring countries? At the moment, it's, only, it's at the countries where Asiata is present, so 10 markets, okay, uh, in Asia region. I see. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, that's, uh, that's a very wide network of, um, of clients and, and data collection. All right, cool. So um, do we have any more questions from the audiences? I think we do have a few more. We have one more. All right, that's wonderful. Ah, okay. So last but not least, here we go. So from Lee Sherman, uh, how, do, how does Ada tap into customers' phone without them, without them acknowledging permission? So for businesses, we will need to integrate geofencing in our app. And what certain extent of data could you possibly collect? Email and phone number. Uh, so yeah, Dr. Wong, I think perhaps okay. you could have a bit more of uh, insight on the data collection process. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll break that part into a few questions over here. How do we tap into customers' phone without them acknowledging? Um, what is actually happening is you allow access to location at all times or during using app. 
Okay, that's when you provide that permission. How that is being used is because you already consented to the to the location or GPS coordinates being collected, right? So there's no there's already all opt-in base, okay, consent base. So that's first thing. Second thing, how do businesses uh, integrate geofencing in our app? You don't need to do so. Nothing from your end. We geofence all the locations, okay? So we already geofence close to a million point of interest in Malaysia. Uh, we have we're presence in 10 markets, okay? But in Malaysia alone, we geofence just now for the example of petrol stations, um, four, close to 4,000 petrol stations, we have to geofence that. We don't need clients input on that because we geofence that. Whenever an IFA is captured within the geofence area, that's where we map it to our exact database, okay? Now the third question here, to what certain extent of data could we possibly collect? Uh, a few attributes there. Actually, what we're collecting is what app or app categories you're assessing when you see the free apps, okay? Your GPS coordinates, if you allow access to location, uh, your timestamp, okay? Your mobile operator, your device model, these are actually being sent to the ad exchange service, all right? So none of this is uh, um, consisting of PII. To what extent? Only to this. We don't know your actual age, your actual gender, just give a simple example. If you have period tracker app in your phone, I assume you are a woman, right? If you have a child or, or um, in a learning app in your phone, I assume you have a young, young child, right? So these are some of the simple examples. Of course, we have our AI model to verify um, up to 80% accuracy, I would say, on the, your gender, your age group, your affluence level. Now, those are the things, your so home location, your work location, okay? Those are some of the attributes that we can, we can track. We cannot see email, we cannot see phone number, we don't know your actual gender, your actual age group, so it is all PII compliant. All right, thanks for that. All right, thank you so much for, uh, I think, easing quite a lot of the anxieties, I think, when it comes to data. Um, I think, Lee Sherman, if you're interested in this, situ in this also, you can also look up the PDPA or the GDPA for more information on uh, data laws and also compliancy. So if you wanted some extra reading uh, aside from the wonderful products that we have um, from Ada. Okay, so we have another question here from Zoe. Uh, thank you so much, Zoe, for sending in your questions. All right, if I want to monitor foot traffic in our store in a mall, can Ada help with that, Dr. Wong? Okay, a good question. Now, when I mentioned GPS coordinates, you know, we can't see which floor you are in. Petrol stations is a good example because, you know, it's always standalone, right? Um, a, a hospital is usually standalone, for example. Um, a golf course is standalone. But when it comes to store within a mall, we need to have a different solution for that. Now, we work with our partner, okay, to determine the Wi-Fi triangulation within a mall. We can see exact traffic into your store in the mall, but that requires us to work with our partner uh, for the Wi-Fi triangulation, and that requires uh, an SDK to be installed in your app. Okay, so that's a different solution altogether. What we can see from our existing data now is already a bird's eye view, but within a mall and just a store alone, we would have to work with our partner. It can be done, but it requi requires um, a different initiative. All right, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wong, for the clarification. I think that would help quite a lot of, um, you know, uh, local businesses or you know uh, physical businesses to also plan out what they potentially might want to do so i think uh thank you so much uh everyone for the questions in our audience thank you uh, so much for asking us all those questions wonderful if you do have any more questions unfortunately we have uh you know we, we are running out of time and we do have to bring the event forward but if you do have any other questions do not worry we'll send them over to dr wong and perhaps we could have some of the answers later uh, after the event cool dr wong yeah sure. all thank right <laughs> okay wonderful all right so thank you so much dr wong for that and uh, to those of you back in the audience we're about to continue on with the rest of the events uh so say bye bye to dr wong and also bye bye to me and then i'll see you soon in a bit all right see you <laughs>